Hi, in this video I used 12 technical indicators combined with a machine learning model to predict future price trends. The advantage of using machine learning here is not only to test the potential of predicting the future trend, but also it allows us to identify the most powerful technical indicators measuring their impact on our trading strategy. So if you are wondering which are the best technical indicators to be used in your trading strategy, this video will clarify this with the help of machine learning. And as usual, the Jupyter Notebook file is available for download from the link in the description so you can simply download it, experiment on it while you are enjoying this video. This idea was mainly inspired by your comments as many of us were curious about using machine learning models with more than few indicators. I just limited our study today to 12 oscillators. The reason I decided to use oscillators is because they provide relative values and this fits well with the requirements of machine learning models. Any indicator can be used, however, you have have to apply some modifications that would fit the machine learning model you are intending to use. So here's the list of what are we going to use in this video. We have the relative strength indicator, then the commodity channel index, the awesome oscillator, the momentum indicator, the moving average convergence divergence. And just to be careful here, some of these indicators can provide more than one return value. So all of these values were used in our data frame. Then we have the ATR, the average true range, the balance of power, the relative vigor index, directional movement, the stochastic oscillator, and the stochastic RSI oscillator, and finally the Williams percentage R oscillator. And the idea was to provide all of these indicators to the X gradient boosting classifier and try to predict the trend of the price for a certain candle. Okay, let's jump into the Jupyter Notebook file and see how it all worked out. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We are starting by importing our data frame or creating our data frame and importing our data. We're using the Euro US dollar daily candlesticks from 2003 up to 2021. We've used this before in previous videos. It works well, the data is clean. We are dropping any zero volume candles because these are the candles where we didn't have any price movements. So it's either holidays or uh, weekends. So they are not good for our study. Then we can load the technical indicators list from our um, pandas underscore TA module just to know what is available. This is what we are going to use in this program and if you are not familiar with this module you can get any help to use any function of the module by calling the help function for example help pa.dm the directional movement and you have a list of the parameters that are required by this particular indicator you have a description and you have an online resources also if you are more curious about how it's calculated and you have the details of the function right here so anyway, for us, it doesn't matter. We are just users for today. And at this point, since we loaded our data frame, we cleaned our data frame, we can start adding the technical indicators into the data frame. So this is the RSI. We are providing the closing price and the length is equal to 16. You can, of course, change these values. By default, it's 14. I simply used 16 out of habit because I've been using this value in previous programs because it provided simply better results. Anyway, it doesn't matter between 14 and 16 for our model today. Then we are loading the CCI. We're adding these to our data frame. So these are different columns that are added to the data frame. Then we have the awesome oscillator, the momentum oscillator, and then the moving average convergence divergence function. Since this one provides more than one return value or one return series, we can verify this by calling the help function. For example, if I put moving average convergence divergence at this stage, we can see that at the end, it's going to um, provide three different return series, the MACD, the uh, histogram and the signals columns. In this case, we are going to store everything in a data frame called A, and we're going to join this data frame on top of the um, original data frame that we are using. So yeah, if you want to understand more what's happening here, we can insert a cell below and instead of simply using those blindly I'm going to take this part and we're going to um, put it right here and I'm simply printing A so we know what's happening so A is going to provide three different columns the uh, signal the histogram H S the signal and the moving average 
And this is what we are going to add or join to our original data frame. So the three columns are taken into account. And this is going to be the case for all the technical indicators that are returning more than one column or one series of values. So then we have the ATR, the average through range. It's um, function ATR provided the high, low, and the closing price. Again, the length is equal to 16. You might choose a different value if you wish so. Then we have the BOP, balance of power, the RVI, relative vigor indicator. Then we have the directional movement. Also, it provides more than one column, and in which case we are joining these into our original data frame. We have the stochastic oscillator, same thing here. We have the stochastic RSI, and finally the Williams indicator at this stage. So it provides only one series, in which case we can simply put DF, WPR is equal to the result of this function. So we execute this cell and it's going to add these technical indicators to our data frame. As we can see here, we have plenty of columns now and all of these are going to be read by our machine learning model, the X gradient boosting, to try to predict the trend, the future trend of the price. So at this stage, we know that we have some non-valid values because of the um, nature of the calculations here. In order to clean these, we can drop an A in place equal true. And at the end, we can verify that our data is clean again for the model. We can reset the index, of course. And then I'm printing the tail of my data frame just to make sure that we still have enough data after the cleaning process. So at this stage, we also have to add one more column to our data frame, which is the future trend for each candle. So at each candle, we're going to look in the future of our data and check if the trend is up or down within a certain margin. So I took 250 pips, meaning if the price is climbing 250 pips from the current candle closing price, then we have an uptrend. If it drops 250 pips in the future, then we have a downtrend. We can also modify the stop loss take profit ratio at this stage, meaning if the price climbs 250 pips and I'm putting stop loss take profit ratio of 2 here, this means that the price is climbing 250 pips, but at the same time, it's not dropping below 125 pips, which is half of this. So anyway, this is very related to where you put your stop loss and your take profits. So it's also dependent on the strategy you are going to use. And this is what we are going to use to add one more column to our data, looking at the trend of the price. Then we are using this function to add the column called target into our data frame. We're looking 20 candles in the future to check if we have an uptrend or a downtrend. And I'm plotting a histogram with the different trends that we are obtaining. So we have three different categories. Category zero, where we don't have a clear trend, in which case the price is staying between the stop loss and the take profit values, meaning between plus or minus 250 pips in this case. Category one, where we have a downtrend, and category two where we have an uptrend. Then again, we have some non-valid values generated from this computational part and we have to clean our data and reset our index again. The reason I'm not explaining the details of this function is because we have seen it in previous videos on this channel. So I don't want to uh, repeat the explanations at the same time, not to lose your time. But if you are interested in how this is done, you can download the Jupyter Notebook file check it out and maybe go back to previous videos also where we have detailed the explanations on uh, these parts. Okay, now at this stage, we can start loading the data for our uh, machine learning model. So I'm importing the X gradient boosting classifier and I'm importing the accuracy score and the log loss metrics from the scikit-learn library so we can evaluate our model. The attributes we are going to use are all of these oscillators that we have explained or shown in this video that we have added into our data frame. So the RSI, the CCI, the AO and so on. So these will be the input features for our model and the target is going to be the target column, which is the trend of the future price. And I'm going to split our data into 70% for the training part and 30%, the remaining 30% for the testing part. So we have X train, X test and Y train, Y test split in a sequential way. Our model is equal to the XJ boost classifier and we're going to fit the model using the fit function, providing the uh, training X and the Y 
train. Then again, we try to predict with the ferret model using the predict function, just providing the X train data set. And we try to predict also on the testing part of the data, providing the model with the X underscore test. Just to see the difference, this would give us an idea if the model is overfitting or not. At this point, just to evaluate in a general way the uh, accuracy of the, of the model, we can print the accuracy score providing the Y train and the predicted train. So we are comparing the training target and the predicted training target on a training data set. We can do the same on the test set and we can compare the difference between both accuracies. So we have 63% on the training set. So this is a good fit somehow and 37% of accuracy on the test set. Now to check in detail, just as we have done in previous videos, in the last three videos from this playlist, we can see the uh, confusion matrix and the classification report for the data. And this is showing that we have a more or less good fitting uh, procedure here. We have a good fitting result. However, we are losing the precision when we present the model to read new data, meaning the test data. So we have 20% of precision and 30% of precision for these two categories. And for the category zero, we have 60% of precision. So in other words, the model can easily guess within 60% of precision when do we have the category zero, but only 20% for the category one and 30% for category two. So as you might have guessed, these precision values are not enough to make a winning model in the Forex market or in the stock trading market. One more idea that was proposed by you also in the comments section is that this model can provide us um, an idea about the importance of the different oscillators or the different technical indicators that we are using. So just because we are using X gradient boosting, we have access to this information. It's a function that comes within the library of this model, going to plot this, and we can see the importance of the different technical indicators for the model. According to the model, the ATR is the winner here. Then we have the moving average convergence divergence signal part using 12, 26, and nine hyperparameters. Then we have the directional movement P underscore 16 value, I mean the, um, uh, the column, and the rest of these. So depending on how many technical indicators you are intending to use, you might split and say, I would like to use the best four indicators or five indicators or even the best three indicators. Now, some of you might suggest that, okay, let's choose simply the best three or four indicators and try the sampling again and see if the model might perform better in this case. And I have anticipated this proposition in this case, and we can simply use the attributes, the first three technical indicators by importance. So it's the ATR, the moving average convergence divergence signal, and the DMP underscore 16 column. And I'm going to repeat the whole procedure again, the fitting and checking. Okay, so we have these three indicators. They are as important, didn't have really a change in the classification of these technical indicators. However, regarding the precision of the test set predictions, we are still around 20% and 31%. So we didn't have any improvements in this regard. So in brief, so far using machine learning for trend predictions seems to be much more complicated than what we have thought in the beginning. Even though we have added more technical indicators, it didn't improve our results. Now there might be improvements to be made, starting by the target column. Instead of using, for example, a ratio of two or one, maybe 1.5 would be a good ratio in this case, changing probably also take profit distance, 200. So we can try with these configurations for the moment. So if we repeat everything, we can see that we have a slight improvement for this category, but it might be a random improvement, so it doesn't mean anything. And we are still around 20% for the downtrend predictions. So as we have seen, the predictions are not very promising at this stage. It might be more interesting to include custom trading indicators relying on price movements and see if it brings any improvements for the machine learning models. However, it is clear that the model has preferences among different technical indicators. And this can be a good hint on which technical indicators we can rely on to shape our trading strategy. And by this, I don't mean the algorithmic trading strategy, but also our daily manual trading. This will highly depend on the strategy you intend to use. However, you can always use the program presented here to select the best technical indicators for your specific case, for your specific strategy. 
And this will be it for this video. I hope the information was helpful to you. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.